Hello, my name is Christopher Klein, and I am the Project Director of LUVIS, which stands for Lunar Vacuum Enabled Sample Solution. We are a team competing in the Revolutionary Aerospace Systems Concepts Academic Linkage Program sponsored by NASA and managed by the National Institute of Aerospace. This competition is new to us in the Aerospace Engineering Department, and we were tasked with researching and designing a concept to meet a need of the NASA Artemis Program, which is universal sample cold storage from the moon back to Earth. Our design utilizes the lunar vacuum and optimizes thermodynamics to keep samples at the temperatures which they were collected at, requiring minimal power and reducing risk along the way. Before I get into details, I'd like to share a little bit more about the team. We are broken up into four main subteams, cryo, structures, controls, and systems engineering. The small team allows our members' duties to cross over quite a bit. Figuring out optimal team organization for this new project group posed some challenges along the way. However, we were lucky to be advised both technically and professionally by some top-notch engineers in both Aero and CLASP. For the RASCAL competition, we had to develop a comprehensive proposal for a design that met two parameters, total mass of less than 100 kilograms, and must be able to handle samples at temperatures between negative 230 and 4 degrees Celsius. This left a lot of room for developing requirements on our own, which proved a significant challenge for the first few months of the project. The proposal we produced was selected from over 100 others from across the country to be a finalist, which means I and my team will be presenting our concept to a panel of NASA and industry judges at a forum in Cocoa Beach this June. Before that, we will continue solidifying and testing our design to write a comprehensive technical paper on the concept. We began our work with identifying system objectives and requirements. These fundamentally are to support Artemis activities by storing samples for return from the lunar surface and support Artemis science objectives by preserving samples from Artemis activities. We then considered specifications for the Artemis mission to develop a flow of top level and subsystem requirements. We target containing a sample mass of 35 kilograms with a system mass not exceeding 65 kilograms. We will be able to support two to five spacewalks. The system must operate for about six to eight hours on battery during spacewalks and splashdown, and be able to maintain sample temperatures for roughly 34 days, which comes directly from the proposed length of a crewed mission. We broke up the temperature requirements into three compartments that handle a subset of the full range, after investigating temperatures on the lunar surface. Compartment 1 handles 60 to 80 Kelvin, Compartment 2 handles 147 to 240 degrees Kelvin, and Compartment 3 handles 277 Kelvin for biological samples. With system requirements clearly defined, we can now discuss the physical design of the system. We chose a 7075 aluminum briefcase design, with three compartments dedicated to the temperature ranges previously discussed. The case can be carried by two astronauts in EVA suits, and samples can be placed in eggshell-shaped compartments 1 and 2 on the lunar surface in HALAR bags. Compartment 3, which is only accessed in the pressurized crude module, fits on the outside of the briefcase in a docking port. Each compartment has individual temperature control via dedicated control panels accessed on the top surface of the briefcase. The briefcase itself is 25 by 16 by 8 inches. The eggshell-shaped sample containers are kept at a vacuum and sealed prior to entering the crude module. The cryocooler bay is also evacuated to provide optimal thermal insulation. This bay and the compartments are evacuated simply by exposure to the lunar environment and sealed prior to re-entry of the pressurized module. The overall lid serves as a sunshield on the lunar surface to protect the compartments from radiation. The electronics bay remains pressurized and houses the brains of the control system as well as the battery. <laughs> as for the cooling of the containers, we carried out thermal calculations to estimate the net incoming heat into the cryogenic compartment. We estimated the incoming heat to be 1.8 watts. Our chosen cryocooler for compartment 1 is the SunPower Cryotel DS Mini, capable of removing up to 2.5 watts of heat from the compartment at 85 Kelvin. Particularly, the low mass and the detachable cold head and generator of this cooler made it an ideal choice. For our second and third compartments, we opted to use thermoelectric coolers. When powered, the Peltier effect causes one side to become very cold and the opposite side very hot. 
the layered annular cooler model we chose can induce a temperature difference of 70 Kelvin, implying that they can cool down to 230 Kelvin in line with our requirements. This view shows the cryocooler on the bottom of compartment 1. Copper rods carry heat away from the cryocooler and thermoelectric coolers into a heat sink atop the electronics bay. We are still working out what to do with the heat once it has been removed from the sample containers. We are looking into implementation of radiative surfaces on the outside of the briefcase, phase change materials, or tapping into the thermal management systems already present in the crude module. As for control of these coolers, the control panel on the top surface is designed for easy astronaut interface in all environments. LED displays show relevant temperature and pressure, as well as compartment status. Rotary knobs allow the astronauts to set the compartment temperatures, and toggle switches allow for switching coolers and the battery on or off. Data will be acquired from temperature sensors specially selected for the temperature range they will measure, as well as pressure transducers for vacuum monitoring and a humidity sensor for the electronics bay. Data will be stored internally on a high-capacity solid-state drive. This graphic shows an overview of our concept of operations for the system in the different domains it will encounter. Prior to launch, the container is loaded onto the Orion cargo bay with all systems off. The container will withstand launch and transportation through the hatches of the gateway and the HLS. Upon landing on the lunar surface, the container remains inside the lander until an EVA for sample collection. The astronauts power on the battery and carry the container onto the lunar surface to the sample collection site. They open a vacuum valve to equalize the cryo compartment pressure with environment temperature and pressure. The samples are stored in the requisite compartment in their halar bags and the compartment closed. The cryo compartment valve is then closed and the astronauts will return to the HLS. At this point, they connect the briefcase to lander power and switch to that source for power. The vacuum compartments are not opened again until processing on Earth. Any biological samples will be stored inside compartment 3. During the return trip, the container is transported back through Gateway and the lander, remaining on external power. The container withstands splashdown and remains on battery power until retrieval and delivery to NASA facilities. We aim to complete some physical testing of the system in addition to simulations. We will eventually develop a semi-functional prototype to score bonus points at the Rascal Forum. Our thermal testing will include verification of thermoelectric cooler operation in conjunction with a test article that mimics compartment 2. We will utilize a thermal vacuum chamber found in the Space Physics Research Lab to carry this out, building on knowledge from a rudimentary test shown on the bottom left. We are also carrying out static load, dynamic load, and vibration tests of the full briefcase for different parts of the mission, such as launch and re-entry. The team will complete these tests and finish up the technical paper prior to the May 30th deadline. We will then present our concept in late June at the Rascal Forum, bringing with us our prototype and any relevant test articles we wish to present. Thank you for your attention.